Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Shay Dixon. Shay, it is a Sunday afternoon, a little later than we usually do our uh, reaction pods, but um, I had to make the fun drive back from uh, Houston to Baton Rouge today. From went from College Station to Houston last night, stayed with Buddy, and then Houston to to BR back here. So we're back. We made it. Yes, tell us of your uh, adventures. All over Texas. Texas. A&M. Yeah, man. Te- yeah, I went to uh, well, first I went to San Antonio for, for Thanksgiving for a couple of days and then went up to uh, College Station, which is about three hours away. And uh, yeah, went up to College Station and managed to find my way to the press box. That's always the hardest thing uh, is find your way to a press box in a stadium you've never been to, <clears> especially <throat> an SEC stadium. I had that trouble with Arkansas when I went back in 2018, LSU, my first game, and now AM. 15 minutes to, to find the press box because people don't really know where you're going because only the media section is obviously a very small section of people that need the press box. So they just start directing you to different elevators and people. But we, we made it. We made it right right before kickoff. And you were even the, – the Aggies treated you with hospitality. Even on your walk, <laughs> you were given a cold beer just to quench your thirst. Just just handed me a Dos Equis out of nowhere. I was like, all right. And then he was like still standing there, so I had to, you know – pop it open and, you know, show, show some respect. So yeah, the first time I started drinking the Dos Equis before covering a game, but that was interesting. There you, there you go. So we said before this game all week that it could be tough. We said all week that we thought it'd be close. Then we said, even before the game, you and I both were like, I don't, I got a funny feeling about this one. I don't know. And it turns out our, our guts were attempting to tell us that, not only would LSU lose, but boy, did they come out. As Brian Kelly said, you asked some questions in the postgame press conference, too. So I'll let you chime in on kind of your thoughts. But I thought his postgame press conference summed it up perfectly. You could tell he was just baffled. And he was like, we didn't coach well. Yeah, we didn't execute well. Yeah. But boy, we just had no energy. And, and that was kind of his line of thought of a and treated this game like the final game that people are like the yeah. Super Bowl. If you wanted to just simply say LSU had a shot at a potential playoff berth, AM treated it that way. Like, hey, let's ruin someone's shot at a potential playoff berth. LSU didn't go and take that opportunity at all from the start. They just got completely run over. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. I went back on the way back. I listened to a lot of podcasts and I went back and listened to our podcast uh, from Friday. Uh, or yeah, from Friday and, or it was whenever we did the preview podcast, yeah, the preview podcast, listen to it. And I was just laughing because the whole time, at least me and I, you two, to a degree, I'm trying not to completely panic everybody going into the game. I kept repeating myself on the preview podcast. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to win, but it doesn't feel good. But you know, Devon A chain is really good, but you know, they, they have some talent on offense and they've, they've, you know, only lost two games by double digits all year. Like I keep, I kept like trying to not make anyone panic, but at the same time, I was really, really worried about this game, and then in part, it's because they playing on the road this year. They've just not been good. Florida, Auburn, Arkansas, now A and M. That's four road games. Obviously, Florida they played you know pretty well in offensively, especially, but especially in those other three, they were just flat. They weren't good enough. And I wrote about it. This is. I'm a lot better, I think, of a writer than I am a, a speaker. And I think I wrote it pretty well in my takeaways at the end in the moving forward section. This is a team that doesn't doesn't overwhelm teams with talent, right? They were never beating Alabama because of their talent. They were never beating Ole Miss because just off raw talent. They executed every single game. They had the home crowd behind them in most of their wins, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Alabama. So when you go on the road, the margin for error is a lot lower. They already aren't overwhelming teams. And AM, which we talked about, has a lot of talent. And that talent looked really good. And they played really, really well. So yeah, that's it was it was baff. I don't want to say it was baffling because we kind of expected it, but for them to get rocked the way they did uh was was a bit of a it was jarring. It was jarring. Yes. Yeah, so we can un pack what you said in a couple of different ways. But I think one thing you said is very true. Um, all of what you said is true, but should ring true for this game. 
A&M is more talented than LSU. That's just raw roster facts. This is a team that you had to rebuild with 19 transfers at LSU. You're starting talented, albeit talented, but true freshmen all over. A&M's got true freshmen out there too. Mm -hmm. But you also have a lot of veterans that you are, they're not like they're your biggest playmakers, right? Like B. Joe Jalari is a great player, but people say Ali Gay leaves something to be desired. Jay Ward can have bad games at times. Like even your really experienced veterans aren't about to be first round picks or anything like that. You look at what AM Antonio Johnson obviously had a great game. Damani Richardson was a five star safety. Edron Cooper is a four star linebacker from Louisiana that LSU should have taken on the past staff. Um, Jordan Gilbert, same story, four star out of Baton Rouge. McKinley Jackson, five star. Bryce Anderson, five star. I'm going down the list of t you know leading tacklers here. Um, Jalen Jones, LT Overton, super highly rated recruit. Shamar Stewart, five star. Walter Nolan, five star. Shamar Turner, five star. Like these are big time talented. Moose Muhammad, one of the best receivers in college football when he gets going. Like Wegman, true freshman, five star. You know whatever he finished ranked, but. Yep. True freshman, yes, but hey, they made the game simple for him. He made some throws, receivers made plays, and A Chain, who LSU fans know because they recruited him out of high school, showed off. I mean, he had never he had three games in his career, Matty B. They had 20 or more carries. He had 35 last night. So career high in carries, goes over 200 yards, and they just pushed LSU around. And people will say, you know, well, AM only beat UMass and scored 20 points. Yeah, AM yeah. played with like half their roster against UMass. Like, yeah. that's not the same as them having everybody back last night, which is what we said. If they get everyone out there, they're actually really talented. And they've played a lot of close games this year. Mm -hmm. Not a shock when you throw in what you said. LSU's not been, they've won games on the road, but they haven't been spectacular. Florida was a really good win, but you squeaked one out at Auburn. You know, neutral side against Florida State, you didn't play well. Arkansas didn't play well. And then AM, you don't play well. Eventually, a team, AM has more talent than Arkansas. AM has more talent than Florida. AM has more talent than Auburn. Like, if you slip up motivated. like that and the other, yeah, and they were motivated. And you slip up like that against a team that actually does have more talent than you that just hasn't put it together, you're going to get beat up. That's what happened. And especially, like I said, the, the, the margin for error is so tight with this team. And I think that's a credit to the coach that, right? They have been able to play within those margins. They've been able to be really sharp throughout this whole season and make those plays like the two point conversion play against Alabama, make those plays uh, where for the most part, obviously you look at special teams like, yeah, we always come back at that, but that was really the only area where they were like jarringly bad for the most part right Jane Daniels didn't have turnovers for the most part the entire year they had a couple fumbles here and there but like I I just think it this kind of felt like I came away from this game feeling like they were kind of due for a performance like this and that's I say that and it the game was 17 to 17 the third quarter and LSU had the ball and it felt like LSU was going to go down there and score and just take control of this game but this team can't survive a gut punch like Jaden Daniels fumbling and then returning it for seven. Not a lot of teams can, but this LSU team especially, you can't with the margins they play in. You can't survive a gut punch like that. They weren't then they can bounce back from it. And the reality of that moment under the microscope would have been all year. You've had really good halftime adjustments. And yes. AM essentially they had the ball four times in the first half. One of them they just kneeled it out on the last play. So that doesn't count. They had three possessions. They just milked the clock. They took forever to go up and down the field on purpose. Had no issue moving the ball, getting into third and manageable, all that. LSU had no answer. And they got points out of every single drive, 17 of them. When they came out of halftime, it was three and out. Then you get the offense got the ball back, and it was like, all right. Can they take advantage of this moment? Boom, right down the field score. Then it was like, oh, man, okay, whoa, are they adjusting on defense? Three and out immediately. Then it felt like, boom, as you set up for the fumble, hey, now LSU's about to drive down, maybe get some points here. And it flipped, and as Brian Kelly said, and anybody who's watching could discern, they were never the same after that. They never – you already came out with a lack of energy to start the game mm -hmm. when that happened and you let the crowd back into it and A&M back into it. A&M just took it from there and went right back to running all over LSU's defense.
Yeah, and I, like I was saying about the, the margins being thin, even outside of a talent perspective, this team letting opponents get up on them early or at least score on them early. I mean, a and comes out and puts up 17 points in the first three drives, right? And we'll talk about the defense as well, but like overall as a team, when you fall behind at that point, just naturally you have to play perfect. You have to play better than what you did obviously to start the game. And so when you do have those, the Kyron Lacey drops, when you have the fumble for six, when you have the holding call by Emory Jones that put them back to, um, I believe that was a third and 16 at that point after, um, after that, you can't survive those because you're already playing from behind. And this offense is not built to play from behind. As we saw Jaden Daniels had two passes of over 15 yards in this game that were completed. So it's just, it just starts stacking up and you have, and that's why when I say it, it felt due going down to 17 to Auburn, very well, a game they could have lost going Arkansas, very well, a game they could have lost, you know, if this game, the, but the fact is that they lost to A&M and that's what makes it, that's what makes it annoying for LSU fans. That they didn't lose to Arkansas. They didn't lose that game to Auburn. That may, maybe they could have taken swallowed that pill a little bit easier. You lose to AM, your rival, a team that just has been awful this entire year, been the laughing stop of, stock of college football. That's what makes it uh painful for that for LSU fans. I think it probably makes it more painful than even people who were saying, no, I wanted the shot at the playoffs because were you really beating Georgia? You know, right. so you wanted to be able to get to a 10 win regular season because, and I think this is important here because we need to unpack this in a way of separating what last night was versus what the season was. Yes. The season and this whole discussion of what we're having right now, the season you were Vegas slots you at six and a half wins you went into last night with nine. So you were already extremely ahead of schedule. You won the SEC West. You beat Bama. You did a number of notable things throughout the season, including just getting better and better as the season went on. Then after Bama, you just kind of hit a road bump where you went to Arkansas in a bit of a trap game, managed to win it. You have a non-con game with UAB. It's kind of whatever. You went out there and handled business, and then you fell flat against A&M. And I don't think they were looking ahead. I don't think any of that. I think this just boils down to they are what they are. And uh, mm -hmm. what they are is the same roster that started the season with 30, you know, 19 transfers and having to put a bunch of freshmen in and trying out a bunch of different lines until you found a combination and really relying on like three receivers all year. And, you know, you've got your running backs kind of in and out of it all year. So, it is what it is it, that, like you said, I don't know if it's due, they were due for it, whatever, but they were always capable of getting beat like that. It was just, they executed in a lot of games that got them out of a spot where they were getting mm -hmm. blown out. Tennessee blew them out. A&M beat them up it is what it is that this team is not talented enough to just run over those teams. They aren't. Yeah. And that, maybe eventually, yeah, that, but not this yeah. year. Exactly. Exactly. I think this will be, you know, we'll look back on this team and be like, man, hey, they piece it together with no depth on the receiver, no defensive line depth, you know, uh, starting two tackles on the offensive line and Cam Wire at or not Cam Wire, um, Charles Turner at center, like Jaden Daniels figuring it out. The, the running back room in complete flux with, you know, I, I just, the running back room, I think will continue to get better, obviously, under Brian Kelly, because I think it's only up from here. For them, but it's like I think if we look back on this, all of that can be true, and that you know, this team on paper is not a nine, ten win team. With that being said, though, I do I do want to make sure I, I don't completely void any blame or anything like that. You can't lose to AM in this game. Like I just it it's still no. it still is something that needs to be all criticism, I think, is fair because I just don't think you should have lost this game. I think all criticism is fair. We can look at it big picture and be like, this team has overachieved the entire season. They've executed. They've been really, really good. But that being said, damn, you can't lose to a &M. You just, you can't. You can't. In this, in this situation, this situation. No, no. This, that would have been, you would have felt a lot better had you won that game and gotten into the SEC championship and yeah. said, you know what, even if LSU loses, we're going to a New Year's Six Bowl. It's no big deal. 
now it feels a little bit like all the pressure's on you to actually pull an upset and to get into a New Year's Six, to feel like that's a validation on what has already been a really great season, um, an excellent season, all things considered. But when you get this far, you want to be able to close it out. And they've beaten, just because you've seen them step up and execute in big spots, it's a letdown when you go over there and in your final game can't get a win and just really kind of get pushed around. Um, yeah. And we can kind of comment a little bit more on the A&M game, I guess, just to finally put a bow on that for good. Yeah. What was your biggest shock? Because I think for me, and I was, I was having to be tasked with moderating the game thread, um, which was fine. We didn't, it wasn't too wild in there, but everybody was baffled of like, I haven't seen the defense just get pushed around with no answers, whether that's coaching, whether it's effort, whether it's execution, whether it's all three of those things. It was so, I mean, a chain ran for 200 and something yards. They gave him the ball 35 times. He's carried it more than 20 times, three times in his career, 35 times. So like and Jimbo knew we can just make short passes for Wegman. Moose Muhammad had a couple of big plays in the passing game, yeah. but keep things simple for Wegman and, just push these guys around. That's for me. I never saw that coming. It has to be. Yeah, that that has to be it. I, and the thing is, like, even if you told me A Chain starts the game in the first quarter and runs all over us, you, I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. Sure, they they score a touchdown, a field goal in their first two drives. All right, that 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 makes sense. That checks out. But for us to come out in the second half, and it still didn't feel like again. They started off with three and out, three and out. But the first three and out, they passed it three straight times. The second, I don't remember the second three now, but they go three and out again. And then after that, A chain once again starts getting loose, again starts getting loose. And then uh, I actually think Wegman's a pretty good quarterback. I think I said that in the, oh, yeah. the Ole Miss game or Bama game, whatever game he played in. And I said on the board, I was like, this guy is, this guy is legit here. And there, everyone was like, well, Jimbo's going to ruin him. I mean, this Connor guy's pretty good. Um, but the, the fact that we were all here waiting for Matt House's adjustments, the second half adjustments that these kind of become known for. And you know Brian Kelly's talked about how great he is at in-game adjustments. We were all waiting for that, and it never came. And I, I don't want to say the adjustments never came, but it can be both. It can be the adjustments either didn't work or the execution didn't work or they just got pushed around. They just got pushed around, and that's what it felt like. And that's something that you don't expect to see from LSU against anybody to get pushed around like that, um, especially an A&M team that had struggled in offense so much this year. So, yeah, that's definitely – the main takeaway uh, for me. Do you think that this year has instilled enough confidence in them, or have you seen enough from Brian Kelly to know that they will come out against Georgia and perhaps play better than they would have had they won this game by 10 points? Like everybody just figured they would. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they put, give Georgia a real fight, like give Georgia a real, real fight. Um, Obviously Georgia has struggled a bit in the past couple weeks, Kentucky, Georgia tech, they end up putting Georgia Tech away, obviously, but there. This is a LSU team that will. I think they'll bounce back pretty well. Like if we just start with just that's just again gut feeling. Who knows? But I think this is an LSU team that is legitimately was not looking overlooking a And M. I believe that they have obviously bought into the process, are locked in every single game, and just didn't have couldn't overcome those mistakes like they could in the past. Like in the past, this whole season, it's been overcoming adversity, overcoming adversity, overcoming a 17 point deficit to Auburn. Like at some point, you're not going to do that. And it just didn't work out. And that's the, the vibe you got from Noah Kane and Mike Jones and even Brian Kelly to a degree. It was just like, yeah, they, they made they made plays and we couldn't get out of our own way at times. And that's what happens whenever that happens. Um, so, you know, Georgia, I think they will bounce back and give Georgia some fits. I don't know if I'm going to pick them to win, but. I think they can cover. I think it's a 16 point spread right now. I think they can cover that, but still, still early. Yeah, early in the week, but I do, I agree. My gut feel tells me just because I've seen how this team has played after a loss that, yeah, that they come back with a bit of energy. And, and, and certainly if you can circle what you lacked, um, and you can, sometimes you can't help if the other team's just executing on an extremely high level. And you can certainly play a hell of a lot better than you did offensively and defensively. But I think the effort and energy is something we haven't had to question this year until last night's game for some reason. And I don't think that Brian Kelly or the staff or the players, the leaders on these team, the team will let them come out flat again. 
which I yeah. think is important. I, if you want to hang around with a team like Georgia, who does, is the best in the country, you hadn't lost, does everything really well, executes really well, you've got to also bring some energy. Or a team like that can just deflate you. They'll just grind you out like A&M did. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, uh, Defensively, I, I think they bounce back. I think they'll be okay. I, I We've talked about it before. I mean, them figuring out the linebacker rotation the whole year. Uh, obviously, Jarek Bernard Converse was out, which forced Jay Ward to play boundary uh, for the, the entire game. And then whenever they did go to the nickel package, they put Sage Ryan in at nickel, who played a lot. Um, I, whether Bernard Converse is back or not, in, in the coming week, I think they will look better. But it, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard because, again, this is basically a road game. Here, even if we consider it, let's consider it a neutral site game. It's not a home game, and I think to a degree LSU has benefited greatly. This team, especially, has benefited greatly from playing at home in some key games this year. Like I don't think that's an indictment on anybody. I think that if anything, they should be applauded for that for being able to play well at home against Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Alabama. But this isn't a home game, so now you have to. This team, for the first time all year, is going to have to show again, maybe outside the Florida game, going to have to show early on we can play on the road. We can manifest our own energy, and we can match what Georgia does early on and not go down 14-0 in eight minutes. Like, I think that's going to be a really interesting talking point for this team. And for a program, I think as far as Brian Kelly is concerned, Brian Kelly wants to start to instill that in this team. You want to start to see some um, – some changes in that aspect. And I think that's what the postseason is about for a lot of coaches. At least that's from, from what I've heard. Those postseason practices are huge. And I think that that will be the case for this team as well. It, uh, we have a lot to talk about this coming week. I'll tell you this. LSU wants to avoid this. You don't want to lose three straight to end the season. You yeah. don't want to lose the SEC championship and lose a bowl game and lose your final regular season game when you had garnered so much goodwill and good feelings out of what was to come. So kind of, on a bigger scope, I do think that it's very important that they find a way to win one of these next two games. My question is, if they lose the championship game but win a bowl game, they end at 10-4. and four. I think everybody's pretty happy at 10-4. and four. Absolutely. You're fine with that. You've made, if, if you win the bowl game, that makes people feel like they've left on a good note. If you win the SEC championship over Georgia, then it, it probably puts you in a lot similar situation like AM where it's like, well, now you should just win a bowl game. Right. Like if you just yeah. did that, you should win the bowl game. So I, I do. I think it's paramount that they win one of these next two games. Yes, I agree. I'm trying to look up bowl projections right now. Um, just to, I know we're getting. Well, essentially, it, so. if they if they beat Georgia, it would be a New Year's Six Bowl. Yes. If they don't beat Georgia, it'll be a Citrus Bowl type of game. Yeah, Citrus Bowl. That's what this they have. And I, you know, I don't, I don't want to get too far ahead. But, you know, if they did play the third best team from the big 10 i think they would be pretty significant favorites in that game so we would see uh real quick just uh wrapping up the game i thought Jaden daniels it's hard it's hard because whenever he gets in trouble whenever they get down and he doesn't think the pass game is working or the scheme's not working or the defense is taking stuff away he does look to run a lot so it's kind of hard to evaluate the pass game as a whole because he does start running. And I mean, he was pretty effective for the most part. Again, I think that holding call on Emory Jones when they were driving to tie the game after the fumble was a huge call. I didn't think it was a hold, but that was a first down, and I thought it could have really given them momentum. I think you said this during the game and, and after the game in your piece, but the reality too, and this is a postseason discussion, I'm, this isn't a right or wrong, and in fact – You'd have to say it's right because the offense has actually played pretty well this year and won yes. some games as well as the defense. But Mike Denbrock's offensive philosophy, at least with this current makeup of the roster, is not built around explosive plays. It's built around a very methodical approach where a lot of things kind of got to go right. And you it, you take a lot less risks, but you're running the football, you're quick game in it, you're letting Jaden run it, you're designing runs. When they get behind like that, they can't. they're not going to be able to come back. Like you cannot get, you know, late in the game. In the like second you just, half. You're not, exp yeah, correct, correct. Yes. You can still run your offense if, you, if that happens in the first half. It's happened plenty. They've trailed double digits in a lot of games in the first yeah. half. When you got 12 minutes left in the game and you're losing by 14, it makes it very difficult to be like, okay, we're going tempo now, but we don't have any explosive design to anything we're really doing. They're At least we haven't seen it this year. No, their most explosive play 
has been Jaden Daniels rushing. Remember Florida State, he breaks the big run. Mm -hmm. Alabama, he had the big run. Like those have been the most explosive plays when they've been down in the second half because the defense drops and he just starts running. Like that's and so that that is like you said, that's a post uh season type thing. They're gonna have to evaluate is how do you get more explosive? Is it on the receivers? Do they need to maybe add some speed at receiver this offseason? Do uh, is the is it offensive line? Is it Jaden Daniels? Is it Denbrock? I think it's a little bit of everybody, but that is something that you could just tell the whole game. A and M was driving the ball down the field because that's what it felt like they could do at will. LSU was driving the ball down the field and getting into the third downs. They went four of eleven on third down. It felt like that because they that was their only option to move the ball. And uh, I, I I asked Brian Kelly about how Jaden played after the game, and he was like, you know, they played a tight uh, two man um, cover two with, with man underneath and trying to take it away. And to me, what I, I mean, again, what I hear from that is you, you can try to be a little bit more vertical, but I just don't think that that's in uh, their, their uh, arsenal right now. So yeah, Jaden is what he is at this point. I think he's a really, really solid quarterback. And I personally want him to come back next year. And I think he can be really, really good next year. But um, at this point with this past game, it's not built to be vertical. Yeah, off-season discussion. Be interesting to yeah. see. Shout out Malik Neighbors. I thought he was really good again. Seven yeah, catches, sixty-nine yards. Kayshawn four for forty-three. Um, again, Jaquel and Roy had a great game defensively. Yes. Yeah. Um, Not many just, people did, but he played solid. It's just building that depth, man. It's just building that depth. That corner, you have to build the depth. At offensive line depth, running back depth, receiver depth. It's just building it out over, and that's the, that's going to be a huge talking point. I'm interested to see if they can get Josh Williams back this week, but I also yes. think, I mean, if we talk explosive elements to an yep. offense right now, John Emery is, if he can hold on to the football, he's very clearly the most explosive back you have. And he does things for you on wheel routes and what he scored three touchdowns, all what the only three touchdowns he scored. Yep. So you'd have to think yep. you got to lean on him versus Georgia. You'd like to get Josh Williams back too. I agree. I agree. Um, trying to see if there's anything else here. I mean, yeah, like 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 we said, it's a um, it the loss sucks uh, from an LSU perspective. Obviously, for multiple reasons, it's a And M. It loses your opportunity at playing in the playoffs. Um, but from an overall perspective, it kind of uh, it makes sense, and that's why that's why we had that feeling. It was like, could this team really go ten and two? Like they would have to play perfect to go 10 and two this year, which we knew coming into the year. That's why we both had them at eight wins because that kind of felt appropriate, but Hey, they come out beat Bama, you know, and now they're at nine wins. So, you know, exceed expectations, really, really good regular season. Now we get to the postseason, and and um, we can have some fun there. Let's do it. We'll have plenty more to come this week, obviously. Yep. For sure. All right, Shay, I'm going to get this up and go, go to sleep. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go long couple days for you. Sleep. Yeah, tired of driving. Tired of driving. At least we'll be flying to Atlanta. Don't have to worry In about driving out. over there. We'll come, yeah, In and out. That'll be a lot easier. In and out. Well, all right. Uh, that's all we have for you all uh, today. We hope you all enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube if you have not already. Uh, leave a like. That helps us out a lot. Uh, send it to a friend. Uh, drop a comment below. Let us know what you think about the game. Um, what was the most staggering thing to you? And... Um, yeah, was this season a success? You know, I guess you could drop your comments there or on our board on the on three, uh, Bengal Tiger on three. Uh, the board's been popping obviously for forever since we've gotten there. So um, it's a lot of fun. Again, a dollar for a year. I'm wearing the hat, wore the hat the whole podcast for the first time. Uh, it's been fun. And if you're listening on the audio side, leave us a five star rating and review wherever you are listening. We appreciate it, and we will talk to y'all later.